This is the Radical Rad Podcast. Hello, everybody. Hope all my fellow Canadians are having a fantastic extra day off this week. This is the second of two bonus podcasts for this week here on the Radical Ramp Podcast. July the 1st, Canada Day, our stat holiday, whereas in three days, my fellow American friends will be getting theirs day off. This is, like I said on the episode of the Radical Ramp Podcast last Wednesday, this is a special episode where I'm just going to go through random gamer questions. I found a place that had a few that some being controversial, some aren't, and then I added a few of my own in there to get this going a little bit longer. So I'm not gonna waste too much time into it. So straight up, this is just gonna be, there's no news, there's no stories in this. This is all just me talking about my thoughts on various things. So I'm getting questions like, what's my favorite game of all time, which I'll do. And then there are some controversial questions surrounding gamers that I'm also gonna answer in this in this questionnaire that I found online to give me kind of a couple extra questions in there. I knew a couple of ones that I was gonna answer on my own. And then I just looked for something to have a few extra in there for me so I didn't have to sit there for an hour just typing out questions that I thought would be fun. So let's just get right to it. So as I quickly navigate over to WordPad to go through this massive little questionnaire that I found. So start from the very beginning. What was the first game I ever played? I don't 100% remember exactly what game it would be. But odds are is that it was Pac-Man on the original arcade cabinets. I remember being very young when I was still living in an apartment with my folks before we moved into our first house. And there was a coffee and donut shop right around the corner that had one of those old school Pac-Man machines. And I remember loving the shit out of that. Every single time we went there, I was praying that they would give me a quarter so I could play a couple rounds of Pac-Man. And that's honestly the thing, the earliest memory I can think of I mean, in terms of first game I ever played that I definitely like played at home would probably have been either Sonic 2 on the Genesis. It was definitely a Genesis game. I know that much. I think it was either Sonic 2 or it would have been Tommy Lasorda's Baseball on Sega Genesis. Those are the first two that I can distinctly remember playing at a very young age. So those are the three that I would tell you right off the bat. Second question is, when did I feel like I had become a gamer? Or at the very least, as I kind of like to phrase it, when did I think that I was going to be playing games for a long time in my life, that it was not just a phase? Um, there were several different inclinations, I think, that I could have had that said, hey, this is this is a thing. I think the moment that it really became prevalent was when I played my first Final Fantasy. Um, there were various times playing games on the Genesis beforehand, but I think as soon as I owned a Super Nintendo and got my first chance of playing Final Fantasy II, or at least what then was named Final Fantasy II in in North America, but that was really Final Fantasy IV because Japan thought we were too dumb to be able to handle two and three. Um, The second I played that game and distinctly remember turning off the TV and like cutting out a really tiny piece of duct tape to put over the red light on the Super Nintendo so they wouldn't think it was on still. Um, That was me figuring out that, man, I'm so into this that I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm still trying to play it. So that's probably the moment that I think really put me on the path. And then I think when it officially became clear was when I started playing Counter-Strike Source, obviously on PC, and getting really into that and eventually to the point that I actually joined a clan and was doing game battle matches. Never really becoming successful, but that was the first time that I ever took it legitimately seriously. So I think if there were two specific moments that really show that that's where the gamer roots were coming in, Final Fantasy IV is what put me on the path and Counter-Strike Source kind of cemented that. Next is... The easiest question, what is my favorite all-time game? That is and forever will be 
unless someone can somehow blow me blow me away, but I think the emotional value just isn't there the same way with me anymore. Final Fantasy X will probably be my favorite all-time game. It's funny because it's not. I don't even think it's the best Final Fantasy, but it's my personal favorite. Because uh, when I look at things from a critical standpoint, Final Fantasy VI is leaps and bounds the best Final Fantasy game ever made. But X holds a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. Um, because it hit so many perfect notes. It was right around that time that I was in my early teens, so I really was very emotionally open for anything at that point, and that was the game that happened to really get me moving forward. Uh, my favorite, Some of my favorite characters are from that game. Some of my favorite songs are from that game. There's so much to it that I have played over and over again. I can vividly remember way too many characters in that game compared to any other game out there. So I know that in my head, the majority of space that's been given to games, the major, like the, the, the game that holds the most space in the memory that I have towards gaming is without a question Final Fantasy X. So that's kind of where I swing when it comes to being my favorite all-time game. Now on the flip side, what's my favorite game of every console or handheld device I've ever played? So I'm doing it in order of what I own from beginning to finish. So the first console I ever owned was the Sega Genesis. My favorite game on that, it's a it's a toss up between Sonic the Hedgehog 3 because I played the shit out of that game and refused to use save points in it because I wanted to do it all in one shot. And the ice cap zone is still one of my favorite zones ever, especially with the music. Uh, the other one on the Genesis that would become very close and it's a really hard uh, two to pick between is Fantasy Star 4 The End of the Millennium because that is probably the only non-PlayStation RPG that I'm really behind or sorry not PlayStation or Super Nintendo RPG because every other console has just never hit me with the JRPG uh, it never really hit me with the JRPG fandom that I have on any other console Fantasy Star 4 is the only one that wasn't a PlayStation or a Super Nintendo that's ever hit that because N64 didn't do it, the game, no handheld device has ever gotten to me to work on that. And even the 360 hasn't been able to put out a JRPG that did it for me. So that's kind of where I stand on that front. But yeah, those are the two with Genesis that, that I could definitely say are my favorites. Super Nintendo, it's very easy. It's Final Fantasy VI. Like I said, the best Final Fantasy ever made. Uh, a lot of people really act surprised when I, when I say I've never actually finished Chrono Trigger. It's just one of those games that for whatever reason just keeps passing me by and I can never seem to find time to get around to it and it just seems like one of those games unless they remake it uh i may never get to it so that's kind of where it is on that but yeah final fantasy 6 without question on the super nintendo uh the n64 that one gets a little bit tougher because there's a few really good choices but i think for me perfect dark is the one that stands up among the rest i mean goldeneye was also pretty good but perfect dark had just a little bit extra and I never owned Super Mario 64, so I didn't really get a chance to really sink my teeth into that game unless I went to the video game rental store back in the day and we get it for three days. But even then, I couldn't get enough time into it, whereas Perfect Dark, I played endlessly. We moved to a couple of handhelds. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, uh, obviously Pokemon Red or Blue, depending on which way you want to go. Uh, that's not even a question. I, do I even have to explain why? Like, that's that's it's literally the original Pokemon. Like, I don't have to explain much more than that. Game Boy Advance gets a little bit tougher because um, I'm actually still just thinking about it. It could, It's probably Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, but um, Zone of the Enders, uh, is it Fist of Mars? I know it's something to do with Mars. I really like that game. Um, those are the two that really stand out, at least right now, that in, in prevalent in my head. But Tactics Advance, I think, is the is the runaway on this one. That game also has a weird place in my heart because I because of how I my listening habits were when I played video games, I would always hear music instead of because uh, I because I would play these some of these games on emulators as well, and I would often not have the sound on so I could listen to music. And that game is synonymous with the song "Numb" by Linkin Park which now even has more value now that obviously Chester Bennington passed away. And I recently, after he passed away, I played Tactics because that's that's how I remember that song. And 
even then I, I felt a little emotional just playing through the game a little bit. I never finished it, but you know, I already had once I didn't need to, but it was nice just to have a bit of that nostalgia come back. So that game holds a dear place in my heart. PlayStation 2 is next. Obviously, like I just said, my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy X, so that's there. So just to have a runner-up, because I've already said it once, so what would be my second favorite game on PS2? Ooh, that... That would probably... That's probably Star Wars until the end of time. Kingdom Hearts 2 is also very much up there. Those two are probably the, the ones that would come to mind otherwise. But yeah, that's that. Uh, nin or I almost said Nintendo 360. <laughs> Xbox 360 is Mass Effect 2 without question. That is my favorite game from the past couple generations. So that that's a no-brainer for me. I don't, I don't even really need to, to say much about that. And our uh, Nintendo DS, ooh. That's, that's a weird one because I didn't play too much for it. I own the uh, Persona Q um, Grimoire DS because I really like the look of it and I wanted I wanted that. The game ended up not being as good as I wanted it to be, so I was very disappointed. So I'm trying to think of what other games I played on that on that handheld device that was really good. I guess I would probably just go with um, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney just because that's the that's the one that's really coming to mind as a game that I really enjoyed when I played it for the first time. So because I didn't play too much on on DS, so. Yeah, that's probably where I'm going to go on that. Um, Vita, I've only played through the PlayStation TV, so I never actually owned the con the, uh, the handheld console itself, but I did own that little tiny uh, device that you could play those games on your television. And because I already passed on it on, per on PS2, Persona 4 Golden is going to run away with Vita. And then on PS4, as we stand right now, what is my favorite game on PlayStation 4? I had this conversation with my friends at a bar last week. And I sat there for five minutes actually trying to think. You would think figuring out what my favorite game on the console I'm currently playing would be easy to do, and it actually isn't. But when I had that answer, I had a tie because I could not choose between these two. And that is Spider-Man and Kingdom Hearts 3. And both for different reasons. Spider-Man just from pure storytelling and fun aspect. Kingdom Hearts 3 because it literally brought me back to being a 13, 14 year old kid. And that was emotional value that I had not felt in those 15 plus years since. So it was really nice to have that feeling back. So that's where I stand. So those are all my favorite games on consoles I've ever owned. I don't have a PC or an arcade. I guess I could give you like a blanket one. I don't really have an, an, a PC one. Arcade is, is easily Time Crisis 2. That's, that's the easy one for me. I guess for PC, like, because I didn't play a lot of games on PC... I, I never had a computer that was really good back in the day, and my laptop that I have now is really good, but I have consoles, and I basically use my laptop as like a second screen to like either watch stuff or surf the web while I'm like in loading screens and stuff. So I don't play a lot on my PC. The one game that I can tell you that I played way too much growing up, and this is going to be a silly answer in a way, but Backyard Baseball, I believe it was 2003, it was 2003 or 2004, I believe the edition was. It was a very arcadey, cartoony baseball game, and everything about it was so much fun. You know, as a young kid, I didn't really enjoy playing like your Ken Griffey Jr. baseballs on, on the Super Nintendo or uh, RBI baseball or MLB baseball when EA was still making them. I, they weren't really there for me. So when that game came out, and I'm a big baseball guy because that's what I grew up playing as a kid, that game was able to take what's generally a slow sport and make it a lot more colorful and fun when it needed it. That's probably the closest answer I could give to you on PC because there's like, I didn't grow up with Doom and Wolfenstein and all those games. I never really sunk my teeth into those. So I missed out on, on the really good old days of, of computer gaming. And now that I don't really have time to play PC games, generally speaking, um, I don't really have even a, a modern day answer. So this is probably the best one I can give you that in between. Next up, what's my favorite game in terms of music? That one is a runaway, but I will give a couple separate answers along with my main answer. So my main answer is Chrono Cross. There is no game out there that, as a guitar player, I have also tried to learn more. And there's so much beautiful music in that game. It's, there's so much calming stuff. Some of the intense stuff is, is incredibly emotional. Um, 
But yeah, in terms of as a musician, I, I have never turned to that game more to try to learn music than I have with Chrono Cross. Now, I will give a couple extra answers as like honorable mentions because there's so many different consoles. For the older era, Final Fantasy VI has incredible music. Um, in terms of really good orchestral music, I find Destiny actually had some unbelievably good music. So there's kind of like my three examples. There's Chrono Cross is my main answer, Final Fantasy VI for, for the old school stuff, and Destiny for like the modern day stuff. And we'll see what happens later down the road. Because, I mean, I could cheat and just say Rock Band, Guitar Hero, Rocksmith, all those games, but that's kind of an unfair advantage with those. Uh, my favorite game to play with friends. I have two answers for this as well. When it comes to straight up chaotic fun it's it's obviously smash brothers and it will always be smash brothers but in terms of just something to chill with friends and play like i love playing online with my friends playing minecraft just because it's a very chill social experience i remember putting so many hours into the xbox 360 version and a lot of it wasn't even spent like actually building all the time i literally just like walk around the map like just cut out plots of land for for our big city that a bunch of us were making but it was mostly talking with people Especially back in that era where I was still a little desolate. You know, I was very alone in, in a lot of ways. So to be able to have a social tool like that really helped a lot. So those two stand out. And then the last uh, fun question, I guess we could say, uh, what's my favorite character of all time, both male and female? So female is a very easy one. It's Riku from Final Fantasy X. Um, in fact, she's my first video game crush. You know, when I was like, I think it was 15 when I played the game, and I think in, in that's how old she is in, in Final Fantasy X as well. Which made me so upset when they ruined her in Ten Two, Like, they made her look really stupid. I hate the Ten Two costume. Which is funny because Yuna is so much better in Ten Two than she is in, in Ten, And yet, my favorite character in Riku is so much better in Ten than she is in Ten Two. It's kind of that weird mismatch. But yeah, she's definitely my favorite female character of all time. In terms of guys, it's probably Geralt from the Witcher series. That's the first one coming to mind. Um... Final Fantasy characters have always struggled with having really interesting guys. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going through all my favorites. Persona doesn't have a runaway guy character either. Uh, Mass Effect doesn't really pull it off. Like, So I'm thinking of all the series that I'm really into, and none of them are coming up. So Geralt's probably my answer there, just for being an absolute fucking badass. So we are now, what, 20 minutes in? Almost. We're about 17 in. So... This is all serious questions now, and some of them are a little controversial. They are gonna pro well, some of them are not. Some like it's a mixture of, of everything here, but these are questions that are a little more thought provoking. So the fun kind of stops here. Some people say that video games are a waste of time. Do you agree or disagree? This is a question where I actually have to build connotations into everything here. This is the thing, right? I don't think video games as a whole are a waste of time because I think video games have allowed people to become very social. I think video games have allowed people to find themselves. I know they've helped me out of depression several different times in my life. Like especially when I was getting bullied all the way through elementary school. I don't know what I would have done if video games weren't taking me into other roles that I would have forgotten about the hell I was going through at school. But at the same time, I can't deny that there are video games out there, specifically uh, very predatory games that take people away from the things that they should be doing, not to mention burning holes in their wallet. There is a question later on about virtual reality that I think will help. So you know what, I'll, I'll do that next instead to kind of add on to it. So on the whole, honestly, I don't think games are a waste of time, but I think that you can make a case for different people because if you're literally doing nothing and just sitting at home playing games every day all day yeah because as someone who did that in when he graduated high school in between college and and then after college it was kind of the same for me like i i was kind of nowhere because i didn't really have a lot of friends uh all my friends that i had from high school had moved away so i was kind of on my own and i kind of just like just balled up into a, in, into my own shell and there were times where now looking back at it, I, I could have done a lot more for myself and I didn't. And it now in, in the price I paid is that it took me a little bit longer to get myself better, to, to find the better part of me. So I think there's, you can say you can go both ways on it, 
But in its in its core, video games are not a waste of time. There is so much benefit to playing games that I think they outweigh the odd case that somebody um, does not do very well with it. So like I said with virtual reality, uh, the question here, virtual reality systems are getting popularity these days. Are you excited about the potential of virtual reality or are you worried? Um, I don't care about virtual reality right now because it's in the early stages. I've said it before with various other gimmicks in gaming. I don't necessarily care where we're at with various things because until we've kind of perfected it or at the very least made it better and we're not in the test stages, I don't really, I'm not interested. But I think the potential of virtual reality is going to be incredible 10 to 20 years from now. And the reason for that is because once we nail it being wireless, then we can look into things like walk tracks, like, like so you can be mobile. And I was talking again when I was uh, hanging out with friends at the bar the other day. Um, I was talking with them about how potentially virtual reality could solve uh, obesity problems, at least in terms of, of people that are just, you know, it's because they're just sitting down and just eating and not, and not ever being active. Because if you can get a gamer to play virtual reality Call of Duty, for example, they're going to have to move and they're going to have to run. And if we can have that, especially when it comes to games like us, like if, like what Sword Art Online is, you can have like MMOs where you you walk everywhere and you explore, and you do that. Like that stuff would be really cool. And what it would also do is you're now having to be a little more active to be able to play some of these games. So what it'll do for people that really want to play these things. Now obviously they're all, they they would have to make the games with the option that you can just use a controller and sit down, but if it becomes cheap enough 10 20 years down the line if you can make these things easy to buy like they're affordable you will see more and more people want to do this and to have exercise programs in virtual reality so it's a lot more fun because just going out jogging is not the most interesting thing you can do but if you're going jogging in like a fantasy world and at the same time you're jogging you you occasionally have to stop and like fight somebody you know, and, and, you know, wave around a fake sword and fight some dragons and shit like that would be really cool. And I think that would get a lot of people a lot more interested in staying active when there is something fun that they can do at the same time. It's almost like multitasking. So I think potentially there is a lot of room for virtual reality to come in to play and really help with some of the core problems that a lot of gamers have, which is, which is their weight issues. Not to mention their just lack of um, athletic ability because a lot of us, quite honestly, don't do a lot of activity. There's a reason why I play two different co-op sports a week. There's a reason why I now do uh, DDP yoga exercises at home. There's a reason why I'm get I'm close to getting um, a membership to my local pool where I can go at night and swim laps because I'm now in my 30s and I've been gaining weight quicker than I normally would. So I'm now in the understanding that my metabolism needs to start moving. So I need to start offsetting it by being a little more active. And I can't be very active if I'm just sitting on my couch playing Dragon Quest as much as I like playing that game. Uh, following up, do video games help develop skills? What mental or physical skills do they help players to develop? I don't know how my hand-eye coordination would be without gaming. I don't know how I would be as good of a batter in baseball that I am had I not had the hand-eye that I do have. I think also it's trained my mind so that I have a very quick eye. I'm very pattern um, obsessive. So I'm always watching ahead of time. Like I'm trying to always keep myself two steps ahead of what I'm doing. And that's because of games like a Final Fantasy or a Fire Emblem or games of that ilk. Not to mention playing Call of Duty. My reaction time has to be aware. So I think in terms of your reactionary and visual skills and and your and just powering your brain and making you think constantly. Not to mention, there's a lot you can still learn from games. So I think there's so much to it. You can learn, you can train your brain to be more active, your hand-eye coordination, your, your ability to just plan ahead. Like there's a lot of, I think mostly it's mental. I don't think physical necessarily is, is as high. Once virtual reality becomes a lot more active, I think you could make that case. But in terms of physical skills, like hand-eye coordination is the big one. Most of it's mental. It's all your strategic ability. It's your your vision to you know see things ahead of time or to kind of look at something and be like, all right, if I do this now, I'll have to prepare for this and whatever else. I think that's where video games are really at its core helping the most right now. Uh, next one. 
children enjoy video games. How old should a child be before he or she is allowed to play video games? Um, I'm not familiar with a lot of games that are engineered for children because most of the games that I play are T, rated T for teen and up. But I think you can make a case that once they're once they're kind of like talking, I think you can find game, like as long as they're like maybe like three and up, you can, you can make a case for it. Now, if the question was how old should a child be before he's allowed to play more intense video games, well, whatever the fucking ESRB rating says. But I think you can still make a case with some kids, and these are the ones that are being raised to be responsible and to be aware of what's fiction and reality, whereas there are a lot of kids that are just being given a free leash and they just run around wherever they want. Those are the kind of kids you wouldn't want to give Call of Duty to or give much more adult theme games. Like, I'm not talking porn. I'm talking, like, games that deal with much more uh, dark issues like death and violence and stuff like that. I think you can make the case for kids that once they hit double digits. And then at that point, like, I don't understand. Like, the trend of Fortnite, for example, I think is a little silly. Like, the amount of killing that these kids are seeing at a young age is a little much. Thankfully, it's not bloody. But I think when we're raising kids at a young age to think that violence is fun. I, I get, and, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, your classic like Fox News Christian Republican sort of deal here, but I do understand that at some point, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna introduce your kids to games, like try to keep them in the early stages of their development into stuff where it's more learning than it is, um, like just for violence. Honestly, like just in, in a nutshell, violence. I'm not against it, but I think if you if I had the choice, I would be wanting to have my kids playing games that are much more thought provoking and much more um, mental heavy, because I would want them to be able to be sharper rather than you know just know how to do a floss dance. Honestly, that's that's how I look at it. All right, so this is the first fun one. It seems that most video game players are male. Why do boys like video games more than girls do? Now, I don't know how old this questionnaire was when I found it, but I, I'm still, like, I know what people try to say the stats are. I would still like to believe that if we're talking, like, what we consider a hardcore gamer, which is the guy, which is, like, the people that are there all day playing games, like, we're talking your serious esports players and like wow players and mmo of that of those ilks i would still hazard a guess that it's probably more 60 40 if not like at, as the like closest margin between men and women I, I i would think it might it would be not more surprising if it's more like 60 30 maybe even um 75 25 or not 60 30 uh, 70 30 75 25 it's very possible because again i'm not the guy who likes to count mobile games because i don't think they're the same thing because it's a whole different beast. I'm not against mobile games. I just don't like the fact that they were put under this gamer umbrella because we used to use the gamer term as almost a um, an insult towards like your your like World of Warcraft guys like South Park would make fun of. So somebody playing Candy Crush for 10 minutes a day is not really a gamer to me. So I try not to count that stuff. And again, we don't really have an accurate estimate of players because there really isn't a way to do that. Because anybody can lie on a survey if you just do it online. But I think it's very obvious by why going to event conventions, by seeing esports tournaments and seeing the the crowds, I, I would hazard a guess that it's very safe to say that still the vast majority of the hardcore gaming audience are men. And the reason why I think men, and I'm not even going to say like video games more than girls do because I don't think that's a fair question. So I'm going to reverse it and say, why do I think more men are inclined to become hardcore gamers? To kind of alter the question so I can come up with an actual answer because... The why do boys like video games more than girls question isn't really a question. It's it's just not a factual statement because it's it's gatekeep it's a gatekeeping kind of question. So when it comes to the fact that m most hardcore gamers that you'll see in public places, especially, are always men, it's because it's an image thing. That's 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 honestly the the blunt answer to that because women are brought up to be to be cute, to be fashionable, to be, especially now in this age where, you know, you got a lot of feminism coming in to try to eliminate the sexualization and try to push them in higher positions. Women are kind of being brought up, expected to become powerful or to become professional or to become very, um, I'm, I'm not thinking of the, the last word I want here, but it's the idea that 
gaming they're supposed to be above gaming because it's almost beneath them because it's something that people still associate with being like we like we answered earlier a waste of time um or in this case it's not worth their time so a lot of women are still kind of raised to stay away from it and women are also bullied really hard by other women so when one falls into the outcast category where they're a very heavy gamer you got you're gonna have a lot of women that are gonna jump those those other girls and really make fun of them and harass the hell out of them and i think for a lot of girls they struggle to be very open about being a gamer because of that not to mention there are still guys out there that i don't understand why but they seem to think that they need to gatekeep the gaming community from women because they think that there's some that are just being fake. To which, like, it's like the bandwagon fan conversation with sports. Who gives a shit? Like, a fan's a fan at this point, and everybody starts out as a, as a bandwagoner. Every, every gamer is going to start as a small-time gamer. Not everybody starts playing WoW 10 hours a day every day, you know? So the fact that there are people out there that also gatekeep the gamer term from, from women specifically but they do it to other guys too because there's always the question of are you a biggest fan of this as i am so i think with all those things keeping that in mind there's a lot that prevent women from being a much bigger majority of the gaming community than men take up currently i don't think it's really a sexism thing so much as it's just it's a sociological thing it's just something that we are not quite as accepting in terms of you know just letting girls be what they want to be if a girl wants to be you know, a gamer and try to become like a heavy street fighter player or something like that. We look down at women all the time for that. Guys, we just kind of like go, whatever, he's a lost cause anyway. Girls, we seem to be trying to be like, no, we have to fix this now so she can be better in the long term. And I think that's that's part of the reason why. And if you disagree on that one, because this is a this is a little more thought provoking, you know, don't hesitate to comment, you know, in the comment section below and tell me what you think about this. But that's kind of where I feel about how it is, because I used to know girls all the time that you know, we're not very open about how often they play games. Like there, there were girls that I used to hang around with and would talk about games with my buddies all the time and they would never say anything. And then on MSN Messenger, that's that's how much I'm dating myself here. They would talk about them all the time with me on, on a one by one basis because they just want other, didn't, they didn't want other people to know just how in depth they were on gaming. So it, it is what it is. It's, it's one of those things that we're still slowly getting better at, at getting rid of because now that we're making uh, the, most games able to have whatever you want, like even with the example of Cyberpunk allowing transgender and non-binary characters in the character creator, we're making it possible for more people to feel like they can be comfortable playing games. And now it's just a matter of slowly weeding out the assholes and the bitches that are on the outside pushing people away. All right, we got a couple more left here. We got th- uh, We got two more. There was one they were going to do about um, professional gamers. I don't really have an opinion on that. I guess they're just saying, like, do you think professional gamers are on the same par as athletes? And I say, I say no, but it's not to take away from the fact that the dedication and the work they have to put into it is still extremely high. But I would not put a, like, even for two of my own fandoms, I would not put a, a professional gamer and a professional wrestler in the same group because they're just two completely different beasts. It's the same thing with gamers and mobile gamers. It's just two completely different things. So I wouldn't attribute one to the other. So here are the last two. Uh, Some video games are very violent. Do you think they influence their players to be violent in real life? If so, what should we do about it? So the answer immediately is no, because we've done a billion different research uh, papers on this subject, and they've always come up with no correlation between violent video games and real life violence. In fact, as we've seen over and over again with various studies, Especially with youth crime, youth crime continues to decline as video games become more and more popular because we are taking kids away from being in this on the streets all the time and getting into gang violence or getting into more drugs and getting into uh, more dangerous situations because they're just at home playing and shooting the shit with people rather than literally going out and shooting people. So um, I think that immediately says no. And it goes the same thing even with like sexism and stuff. I don't think that anything fictional really has any inclination to change things in real life. I think if you are a miserable piece of shit, no no amount of video game playing is going to change the fact that you're already a miserable piece of shit when you came in. It might maybe accentuate something in your head, but you already are a violent asshole or a sexist pig. I don't think playing Saints Row or Call of Duty or Final Fantasy or whatever, 
I don't think that changes anything. So I don't think there's anything you should do about it because there's nothing you can do about it in terms of a video game side. I think everything when it comes to people who are violent, to people who are sexist, to people who are transphobic, to people who are various things that you know we like to label people as, it's all sociological. It's all based on how we act as a society, what we accept as a society, what our government allows, what uh, how we raise kids, whether it's through school or whether how their parents raise them. I don't think video games can ever be attributed as a cause to the problem so much as they are a symptom. If somebody who is very deathly into video games, there are always a lot of things behind it. There could be depression. There could be anxiety issues. There are so many things around someone who becomes a very heavy gamer that you attribute to so many things outside. Video games are not like a drug, which the last question has to do with video game addiction, which I'll get to in a moment. But in terms of like turning people violent, I don't see how anybody can get the idea that video gaming has some sort of magical property that's going to suddenly make people want to take a gun and go out and shoot people at their school. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's, we can't just accept the fact that there are evil people in the, on the planet or there are mentally ill people on the planet and it doesn't take anything specifically to set them off. They just, that switch gets flipped. That's just how it is. So I don't think video games influence people at all. If, in fact, the only thing I think it influences is how big a fan they are of that very thing they are a fan of. I don't think it changes much else. So last but not least, are video games addictive and why can't some people stop playing? I can take this personally because I, I don't know how I feel about the World Health Organization having video game addiction listed as an actual disease, but I can speak to being very addicted to video games. Um, during college and definitely at the tail end of like my, my year of graduating from college and doing nothing since, um, I was very alone. Like I said earlier, most of my friends had moved away from me. Um, I was living with my folks still, and I felt like I was a failure in their eyes. I felt like I was a failure in my own eyes. I felt like I was a failure to everybody. And for a long time, I was not being able to deal with those emotions. So being a straight edge guy, I couldn't turn to alcohol. I couldn't turn to drugs. I turned to the one thing that was my was my like uh, metaphorical drug here, and that was video gaming. And specifically at that time, the NHL series is where I was most addicted. I would play NHL 10, 11, and 12 were the three years of gaming that I was very addicted. And during college, I passed on projects and may have lost opportunities to work in the industry that I never got a job in because of me passing off just so I could go play a couple more games of EA Sports Hockey League with people that I'd never met in person And that's just how it was for a while. And I would go and play EASHL and get mad all the time. And I would smack the controller against the couch. I would never throw it on the floor because I'm smart enough to know I don't want to break things and pay for it. But I would get very vocal. And even then I was getting so mad at the game all the time, but I would never shut it off. I would keep coming back. And why couldn't I stop playing? It's because... It was all I had. In my mind, it was all I had. If I shut that thing off, I had nothing. That's how I felt. And it stemmed from many years of being bullied and video games being my, my sanctuary. And in high school, when I finally found a good clique of friends that I would hang out with all the time, like literally almost every day, I had a leap year in high school before I went to college. Almost every single day I would do something with these friends. We would always do something. So I was always leaving the house. I was doing all these various things, hanging out, going to bars, going to concerts, doing all this stuff. The second they all left, I was lost. And I reverted back into that mode of when I was being a bullied kid in elementary school and just reverted back to the one thing that I knew would still care for me. And during that time, I met a girl and we started dating and she she also took hits 
from my addiction. I, I back down from various things with her because of that addiction. And she still stuck with me. And it took being knocked on my ass in terms of being so alone that I broke down and at a job that I was working at, I would work at a job where I was working for a plant that uh, made like patio stones and I was on the forklift out outside on my own every night, 12 hours a day, four days a week from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. The only thing I had was a radio just to keep me somewhat entertained. And I would just sit out there just staring into the black night every night. And some days I would just break down and cry, especially on really hard days that people were just taking me to task for no reason. Cause I, and, and I know that some people were like, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. These were things where I'm like, I'm literally doing nothing, but just like taking like a half second slower than I guess they want me to. And I would get so upset because I'm thinking, I, I don't know what I can do to make things better. And I would just break down and Eventually, it got to the point that I was so tired of, of getting so depressed and begging. I'm not, even a, I'm, not a, I'm not even a religious believer, but I was begging a God that I didn't know what religion I felt it was from, just begging him to like help me and get me out of this. And I realized the longer that I kept begging that there was nobody answering. So the only person that was going to be able to take me out of it was me. So I tried to find myself to go back to school and... And eventually I did, but not in the way that I was originally planning on it. I just got spooked from something else, so I, I didn't do that. But at the same time, I got an opportunity to move out of my parents' place for the first time in my life and live with a couple of friends. And I jumped at it because I looked at it as the one opportunity I would have to get away and to be able to maybe find myself. And that's exactly what I did. It was around that same time that I found my bisexuality. It was around this time that I found how much more open I actually was. And it got me back to what I was in high school, at least, where I was very open, very talkative. I suddenly started playing co-op sports, met even more friends that way. And my relationship with my girlfriend got infinitely better since. And I got an infinitely better since then. And I still game, and I still game a lot. Even to this day, it hasn't changed. But the difference is, is I don't use it as my sole form of entertainment it's not the only thing i do whereas there are people out there that it's all they have and i totally see where they are from that point of view because i experienced it and to anybody who is under that kind of stress if video games are literally your only savior like go out there and find and like have the energy take the chance and just find one more thing to get into but make sure it's not in the comfort of your own home and make sure it's with people whether it's co-op sports, whether it's going to your local game shop and getting into trading card games or Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop stuff, whatever it may be, find something. Even if it's like going to um, a music studio and learning an instrument, do something else. Just have a secondary thing because as soon as you open yourself to one more thing, you'll suddenly see a few extra doors open that you haven't seen before. And as soon as you open, walk through one, you'll want to walk through a second and a third and a fourth. And you get to where I am now, where I may not be the best person still to this day, but I'm not what I used to be, where I look back at what I was in my late teens and early 20s and am disgusted. Actually, no, sorry, not my late teens. My Basically, my early and like very early mid-20s. And I'm disgusted by what I was because I did nothing. I accomplished nothing. And it took that realization that I was not using games as a form of entertainment, but as a drug, essentially. And that's what it took. So video games as a whole, am, am I saying video games are addictive? I think they have things about them that make them addictive in personality, but I think it's all dependent on the person. Because if you have so many things to distract you from, you can't become addicted to games because you, you don't have the time to be. But if you are in a, a person that has the potential to have an addictive personality, then video anything is addictive. Like you could be addicted to anything at that point. And video games just might happen to be the thing that you have to, to force it. So th that's that. And that's all for our questionnaire. So that's going to do it here for our little bonus Canada Day podcast here. I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, at least in the early stages, fun and then really serious uh, end to this bonus podcast. So... 
As always, like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Don't forget to share this with other friends if you want to uh, pass the word around and, and, and tell them how much awesome stuff is going on here. Uh, hopefully, we'll have at least some sort of a show on Wednesday. It's not looking that good news-wise, kind of like what it was last week. So if I have to find an alternate just to kind of get things going, I think I might put have to put... Um, my full thoughts on the spring anime season in that if it's like if it's like this in two more days you know when i when i when i record the podcast on tuesday night well we'll see what happens so with that being said guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time